I think one of my issues that's starting to happen with Marvel, and I'm noticing it in a lot of the post end game content is that there's like always this fucking like world ending catastrophe that the hero <laughs> has to like to use, man. face off against. Language. Right. And I, I don't know if that's like that's st I'm, like you're starting to lose the uh, the stakes a little bit. Moon Knight, the most recent of the Marvel shows. Here's my. Dan thing. and I watched this together. We did. We did. Marvin has watched most of it, but he's still yeah. got two episodes to completion. Yeah. So Marvin, you yeah. texted me the other day saying. I'm having trouble getting through the last two episodes. And I laughed yeah. because I too struggled watching Moon Knight. And, um, you know, seeing some of the uh, conversations going on about it online, it seems like most people were not like super on board with what they did with really? Moon Knight. Yeah. I actually looked into this a little bit and uh, I thought it was interesting. They had to bring in a. Or they didn't have to, but they they chose to bring in a psychiatrist to to make sure that they were portraying the condition appropriately. Because mm -hmm. apparently, we've all seen Split, right? Yep. Yes. Uh, apparently, the way that they portrayed uh, this disorder in Split DID. was inaccurate. Yeah. Yeah, and there was like a, a bit of backlash, and it caused some people to be pissed off and all that. So I yeah. thought that was cool. I can't tell the difference between my waking life. You have to tread yeah. lines carefully when you go on to substances like that. And Moon Knight fell into that in the comics a little bit, like um, yeah. multiple personality disorder, dissociative identity disorder is what well, they call it now. Just to um, make a quick little but, distinction, the early Moon Knight comic books, he did not have the disorder. He was literally, he had three alternate identities. That he Correct. physically yes. portrayed. And then later on in the series, they retconned it to where Khonshu manipulated his mind so much that he then developed the disorder and took on those personalities. Our identities are not something to be feared. But something to be welcomed. It, feel, it felt like it had all the right things to like draw you in, but somewhere along the lines, I guess I just wasn't able to really get uh, in, invested and really like involved. Maybe the story wasn't that uh, compelling. Yeah, maybe it wasn't like something that can really draw you in. Like I, I, I think it's really cool that they draw on Kanshu or Kansu. Kanshu, yeah. To uh, Kanshu, to uh, yeah. to be like you know the basically where he draws the his moon god. From, right? Yeah. So I th I thought that was cool how they pulled from from that for for like his powers and stuff. That's interesting. Well, as with any comic book series, you have different writers that will eventually take the helm and do story runs, is what they call them. And uh, so they did some story runs where he had multiple personality disorder, and then they got to a point where I forget the author's name. I sent Dan a link of a video covering that when we were watching the series together, but he he did a deep dive into um the 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 did disorder and actually did it pretty well and it made you think when you're reading the comics is is this like really happening in real life uh, or in this universe i guess yeah. um or or is it all in his head is what we're reading like is is he just in a mental asylum in everything that we're reading and seeing on the pages that's just all in his head because he has this disorder so Mark, I'm here to help you. Do you think that you created Stephen to hide from all of the awful things you've done? For those of you that aren't familiar with the story of Moon Knight, uh, we have our main character, Mark Spector, here. Uh, played mm. by Oscar Isaac. Played brilliantly by Oscar Isaac, might I add. I think the show was completely carried on his back 100%. I don't think... Um, well, I there's really only three main characters. You have um, Oscar Isaac, and then you have Layla, who is played by... Um, uh, May Calame. Yes, and then you have Ethan Hawke playing Arthur. Mm -hmm. So those are like every other character in the show is basically forgettable. Those are the three main <laughs> characters. 
and um, Oscar Isaac obviously playing two slash three characters. So we have Oscar Isaac here. We're introduced early on in the first episode to one of his, the main man, the main person is Mark Spector. And uh, we're introduced to one of his alters early on. I don't know. The first episode was like pretty good. And then, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how to like talk about this. Well, so anyway, we're introduced to Stephen Grant, who's one of his uh, his alters early on. And he's a dude who's working at a museum as like a, a gift shopist, as he says, which was adorable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, um, you know, we get, we see early on that he, he realizes that he has some sort of weird, like disassociative disorder. He sleeps like chained to the fucking bed and he puts yeah. sand around his bed to see if there's any footsteps. He tapes his door up all to see if he did anything throughout the night. So I don't know if it wasn't clear whether he like knows that he has this disorder or not, or if he just thinks he sleepwalks or, or what, but he, he's aware of like something going on. Between my waking life and dreams. Hello and welcome to I felt like it would have been better if they almost would have uh, gave us more backstory or something, something that gets us attached to to these different characters like uh, Mark Spector or I forgot the other the other one's name. Um, but them throwing us in the middle like that, maybe Stephen that's Grant. Stephen Grant. Maybe that's some of the reason why it's hard for you to get invested. This is about Mark Spector, who is like a CIA operative or some sort of military guy. And uh, in the at, the at the brink of death from this uh, military engagement, um, he is uh, given... Uh, he, he's contacted by the moon god Kanchu, one of the Egyptian gods, who gives him powers to become the, uh, I guess, vigilante moon knight. And, um, the executor of justice. <laughs> That's yes. Right. The executor the, the big, of justice. The big premise was he was, you know, he dishes out the justice after someone does it, but they're going Correct. after the, I forgot her name. I'm sorry. The other god goes after people before they even commit these bad acts and all this thing. So it's like a battle between, you know, someone right. having already did it and someone not having did anything yet. Yeah. Then we have, uh, that you're talking about Arthur Harrow, who's played by Ethan Hawke and he, he's, uh, his villain right. origins has kind of changed from the comic books, but, uh, he okay. is introduced to us. He was once the former avatar of, uh, Kanchu. So he was the old moon Knight, uh, I guess, so to speak. And um, right. he had a little falling out with Kanchu, and uh, now his mission is to um, basically resurrect another Egyptian god. Uh, Amet. Amet was the other god's That's name. Right. Yes, okay. the, the crocodile god. Yes. Yes. And and what Marvin, you were alluding to, Amet judges um, uh, the whole of a man's life. She, she'll right. judge you and punish you based on what you haven't even done yet, where Kanchu <laughs> is more on the lines of, uh, well, you did this, this, and this, so now you're going to get punished. However, Kanchu is a very vengeful god. He, he doesn't mm. give a fuck, really. He's kind of violent and will do brutal things. For the first few episodes, it's just plot, 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 plot. And it's not really until the penultimate episode, the, the second to last one, where... We, this is only a six episode series here, folks. And it's not until the fifth episode that we actually start to get some deep backstory into Mark Spector's life, into finding out why he has, why he developed DOD, which again, does really good job of giving respect to the uh, real disorder, uh, which can studies show form out of a traumatic uh, event in one's life. And in his case, um, he had a little brother and the brother died while they were playing. His mother blamed him, and she abused the shit out of him for the rest of his young life. And then one day, as we see in this episode, he just snaps into his other personality of uh, Stephen Grant. Prior to getting to that point in the show, it's like this plot just kind of drags, and it's like all about like <laughs> these weird Egyptian gods like nobody has heard of. And like, I mean, obviously we've heard of them, but... <laughs> and um, I would Im I would gather the wage that most people had never heard of Conchu and I mean, before. Yeah, I hadn't. I hadn't, I hadn't either. I hadn't either. Aside from like Ra and like 
you know, some of like the yeah. bigger, what more well known ones. I don't know. You have this like really compelling character, I think, who has this like fucking wild disorder that it's like it's actually amazing that it even exists at all. Like, I, I imagine having to like deal with this in real life. Like, insane. I, like I couldn't imagine. And people that have to go through something like that, it's like it's just really wild to me. Um, but but in in like the setting of like this superhero, right? Um, it's just a really compelling thing because it's like you're dealing with different people, really. Like each personality is yeah. a completely different person who's fleshed out and has different lives, even really. Um, as we saw in this show, like like Jake and Steven and Mark all have like completely separate, different lives independently from one another, and um, I just don't really think they like told the story well. Really, I don't know. I, it's it got way too like involved with like the the gods and i think one of my issues that's starting to happen with marvel and i'm noticing it in a lot of the post end game content is that there's like always this fucking like world ending catastrophe that the hero <laughs> has to like face off yeah. against right and i i don't know if that's like that's st I'm, like you're starting to lose the uh the stakes a little bit the fact that it didn't feel like tied to the MCU in any significant way. Obviously, I know he's a Marvel character and that he will probably show up again later on, but there was no direct tie and there was no mention of anything other than that little Easter egg that you mentioned. Um, but that stuff aside, I just don't think the show was that good. I don't think it was done really well at all. Like it felt disjointed. It felt drawn on at certain times, like certain plot points felt just like they went on for too long. And then, like, you just get to the last episode, and it's like, well, we got one episode of character development that's arguably the best episode in the series, and then here's just a big CGI battle. Bye, folks. Like, I don't know. I just think Moon Knight, for me, at this point, probably the weakest thing I think I've seen from Marvel, because all the shows leading up to this I thought were really good. I loved WandaVision. I loved fucking uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I loved Loki. I loved Hawkeye. Hawkeye being my favorite thus far. Um... So they're still doing like good content, but I'm starting to personally wonder if the appeal for me is the direct tie to the legacy stuff or not. I think that's part of it, but also I just don't think this was a very good show. And it's sitting at IMDb right now with a 7.5 rating, which is pretty good. Um, I don't know if I would give it that rating. I would probably give it like a five. Marvin? Yeah, maybe a six. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you didn't even fucking um, finish it, so... I didn't even finish it. I mean, I, I get uh, you guys explained it pretty well about what actually happened in the last two episodes. Maybe they're trying to uh, stray away from like tying everything into the MCU. So they I guess they have to figure out a way to to make people really interested without it being tied to the MCU, which is probably not an easy thing to do for a show of a relatively unknown character. I think they did a pretty good job. They did justice in giving homage to the comics um they did an okay job of explaining the did and pulling out uh, like oscar isaac was amazing but like i said it was only three characters it was Laza, it was layla and arthur and oscar isaac playing mm -hmm. you know, the three different characters mark steven and jake uh which we didn't even really see jake until the end credit scene so yeah that was like a little a spoiler, teaser spoiler for yeah. you um but so what would you rate I, it? I would give it a six and a half. You know what Moot Knight felt like to me? It felt like a show about a comic book character before the MCU existed. Like this felt like a show that would have come out before the MCU set the fucking bar for comic book stuff. Yeah, that or yeah, just, something Netflix could have done. Yeah, it just feels yeah that or it just feels like filler. Like it's just a filler. Filler is another good word for it because one it's of the movies. Like, oh, here you go. Yeah. That's my thought. That's our thoughts on uh, on Moon Knight. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it was very uh, very strong. It didn't live up to Marvel standards, and it didn't really great make premise. me want the character more. Yeah, great premise. Just didn't great really premise. make me want the character. It didn't make me want more of him, and that's I think a problem. Uh, yeah. That aside, Oscar Isaac's one of the best actors working today. He's incredible in that show. So if you wanted to watch it, watch it for him specifically because what a performance. There were moments where you forget that he's actually the same guy playing do two different roles. He's that good. <laughs> yeah. Like there are really parts like where you think it's two different. It's crazy. He's fucking Great. amazing. 
What's up, people? Dan here. Just to remind you that if you enjoyed the video, to please go ahead and hit the like button. It really helps us out, and uh, it lets us know that we're doing an okay job. If you want to be notified for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, and if you're feeling extra spicy, hit that little bell button down below. Give it a little, give it a little tickle. <laughs>